Well, guys, uh, I'm so excited to get a chance to connect with everyone here today. Uh, I am going to get the opportunity to talk to you all about service events. And this is a topic that a lot of people have a great level of expertise on. Um, this is a topic that some people maybe haven't really dipped their toes in the water. Maybe this is a topic that's a little bit caustic for some people for a variety of reasons. And that's okay. That's all right. Uh, I'm trying to meet you guys where you're at. But uh, service events are something that have been a really big part of both my business and the uh, TGP events team over the last couple of years. Um, now, uh, the very first year at NET, just by a show of hands, who was here at the very first NET? Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Woo! I love it. The very first NET, I had the pleasure of getting a chance to speak, and I had a slide up there, and it's a quote by Harry Truman, and it just said, it's amazing what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. And, uh, and I think that this is really a program that's built on that, but we should give credit. We should recognize people that bring innovation. And so years ago, uh, you know, Luke Mills and the Rising Sun team and Adam Conroy and Jason and Matt Foss and all those warriors out there, they brought service events to the community. And it was just such a powerful thing. And I remember watching that thinking, wow, this makes sense. That seems really cool. But I was a little nervous about it. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how customers would respond to it, okay? I remember the first time I talked to service events with one of my gold star clients, and they're like, you want me to bring my knives to your hotel room? <laughs> and I was like, well, no, you see, it's like, it's not like that, because what, it, well, yeah, it's basically that, <laughs> okay? <laughs> they literally canceled a service appointment. I couldn't figure out why. They're one of my best clients. And when I called them, they're like, dude, we just thought I got weird. Are you selling drugs? Are you doing okay, man? I was like, no, man, it's like a conference room. And they're like, your messaging sucks. Growing pains, okay? But that's okay, guys. We learn. We learn, but I want to thank them for that innovation. You know, uh, when we jumped into it, okay, I, I want to make sure that I'm being authentic with y'all. My first four days of service events, I sold a combined $2,500. Yeah! Y'all can see why I'm up on stage, okay? They had to have some buffer with Curtis. Um, but guys, at the same time, we definitely saw the potential. Josh Muller really challenged us to make this a part of our team. Kelly Kinzer spent millions of hours on this. Rob Steiner became a wizard at finding locations and really conquering the admin side of things. Um, but most of all, it really was our TGP team. It was the CSPs that committed to growing through this together, working through the challenges, because we all saw the opportunity for what this could be. And I really think we've learned a little bit along the way. So um, I will just say, and then we'll dive into this, there are things that we sometimes do and there are programs we consistently execute. If you want to reap the benefits of service events, this must become a program you consistently execute. Y'all, I'm a district manager. I've trained a rep that sold a Cutco kitchen on their very first demo. And you know what that was? Luck. <laughs> okay? Nothing but luck. That is all that was. This kid does not know how to sell Cutco kitchens. It's just a thing he did one time. Y'all follow me on that? Okay, so it can't be that. Service events can't just be a thing you do once in a blue moon. It has to be a program you execute, and that's what we want to talk about today. Now, different teams have strong opinions on this, and my goal is not to change any of your minds. I just want to really stress that. There's more than one right answer. There's more than one right answer. Maybe you guys have a system that's even better, and you'll get to do this talk next year, and I can't wait to learn from you. But I do want to share why I love it, what we've learned from it, and how, like I said, I really think it's enhanced our program. I'm confident we'll have some nuggets here for you guys. Now, here's the whole premise for why I think service events are so important. Years ago at the Cotton Bowl, we were doing our state fair prep meeting, and Seth Kinzer gave an amazing talk. Any Seth Kinzer fans? I love it. By the way, that's a cheat code as a speaker. You just reference someone everyone loves. And you're like, do y'all like him? And they're like, we do. And I'm like, I'm good by proxy. Okay? It's neat. It's fun. Try that out sometime. Guys, Seth was very authentic as he always is. He was vulnerable. He was honest as he always is. And he just said he went through a period of growing pains in his business, okay? Because what happened was the systems of support that he had for 300 reps, or, or sorry, 300 customers, or 500 customers, or 1,000 customers were not scalable to 2,000, 3,000, or even more customers, Y'all follow me on that? Like the expectations he had created in his customers' minds about his own availability or his accessibility or in-home sharpening, any number of things, that is not scalable. And so he had to sort of go through some of those growing pains with his messaging, with his communication. This wasn't even just about service events, but, but I think that's kind of the premise. And if we want to keep growing this into being a $70 million, $100 million channel, we have to make sure in all these interactions we're creating right expectations with customers and that we're living up to that. And service events are one of the best ways to take some of the pressure off. It's the release valve in servicing your customers. 
okay? Um, guys, you know, the thing for me that I will just stress to y'all, and, and, and this is the reason why, and, and then I'll, I promise I got a handout. I laid it all out for y'all. I thought that'd be easier. Guys, here's the reason why service events matter to me, and, and this is my last little pitch I'll give you on this, uh, and then you're either with me or you're not, and that's okay too. I'm fine either way. Um, guys, I want a book of business. I don't want a list of transactions. Y'all follow me on that? I want a book of business. I don't want a list of transactions. I want customers who see me as a resource. I want customers who enjoy their time with me. I want customers who see me as a business partner. That's what I want. I don't want a list of transactions. And we have to be able to give something back. And the good news is if you do this right, the process of you giving back to your clients is going to generate massive CPO. Massive CPO. And even if you don't care about the first part, I bet we all like that second part. But knowing y'all, I bet we all like both parts. How's that? So in 2019, like Carlton said, uh, that's when we kind of started integrating service events into our program. But it wasn't until 2020 we got serious about it, okay? Like it became our life raft. Yes, we live in Texas and Oklahoma, but COVID was still a thing and it sucked. We had hotels we couldn't book. We had places where we had to have certain stations out. We had restrictions on occupancy. Like we had to deal with all that stuff. It was really hard. But we just decided we weren't going to change anything. We transferred all of our prep that we do for our state fairs into service events prep. Our calls, our retreat, all the meetings, all the requirements we have for people to do state fairs, we just turned into service event requirements. And we did two big waves, and that's how we went out there, and we sold over $500,000 in service events. Over the last three years or so, we've sold over $1.7 million in just service events. I personally sold over $240,000 in service events over the last couple years myself. So I'm not the best at this, but I'm definitely someone that has had a lot of success, and this thing has literally made me $100,000 and made a lot of my customers really, really happy. Yay, it's a win-win. My wife, literally, if things are just light and it's not show season, she's like, shouldn't you be sharpening, like, in a hotel? Get out of here, <laughs> okay? It's just such a great thing to stabilize our income. So what are some of the concerns? Let's kind of fly through this really quick. Um, sometimes uh, when I'm talking about this, people have things they'll bring up, and we'll jump into the handout. Uh, people say, I will just do service calls. No, you won't. <laughs> Okay, no, 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 you won't. Now, I'm not saying y'all don't do service calls. You should all do service calls. You should do more service calls. Service calls are incredible, but there's a finite amount of time you can dedicate to them. Um, guys, here's the thing you have to understand is I complete hundreds of service appointments through that, the service event program. Like, there's only so many hours in the day. I'm a part-time rep. I only sell a few months out of the year, and this has allowed me to service more clients than I ever could through service calls. So it's not either or. It is yes and. So it's not either or. What is it? So it's not an objection. When you say I love doing service calls, I say you're awesome. You're a rock star. Never change. Do service calls and do this too. Cool? It's like saying I'm really good at home shows, so I don't know if I want to work a fair. <laughs> Madness. Okay? It's like, no, guys, you can have your cake and eat it too. It's a beautiful thing. Um, sometimes people are concerned they're going to burn through their customer base. Okay? Like I don't have enough customers or, or you know, uh, they won't come every year. I can't fill my events, things like that. Guys, here's what you have to understand. I have fewer customers than most of the leaders in TGP, but on average, I usually do more service appointments in any given year than the majority of our team as well. Even if I'm insanely, insanely, insanely aggressive in what I'm doing, guys, if you have 2,000 customers and you could get in front of 5% of them, that's 100 customers. Well, here's the thing. That's 5%. Y'all follow? That is 5%. There's 95% there that are untouched and likely won't be touched for several years, and you're always expanding that, and you're collecting fresh leads at your shows. The idea that your customer base is the barrier for doing this and not your systems, your organization, your discipline, your habits, your knowledge base, it's kind of an excuse. It just kind of is. Y'all don't work for me. Okay, you work for yourselves, but I just got to be honest with you. I got to be radically honest. It's just kind of an excuse that we're telling ourselves. Sometimes people say, my customers don't show up. Well, your systems and marketing is ratchet. That's why they don't show up, so we'll fix that. I have nothing else to say to that. Uh, I love people say, I don't want to set up and tear down every day. I don't either. And if y'all find a solution to that, please let me know, <laughs> okay? I hate doing it too, for the record, but it's not going to stop me. Guys, it's not going to stop me because I want to book a business, not a list of transactions. Y'all follow me on that? And so for me to run my business in an ethical way, I've made certain commitments to my clients. Expectations need to line up with experiences. Therefore, I have to offer surfacing. You follow me on that? Like, it's just part of my business. It's part of my approaches. Therefore, I must do it. Sometimes people say, I'll just do them solo. I'll just throw them in throughout the year as I have a couple people who want sharpening. Guys, that's fine, but, but there's nothing wrong with doing solo service events. But if you're stripping away all the organizational strength and planning, you're never going to maximize this channel. It's going to be a thing you sometimes do, not a program you're consistently executing. Y'all sort of follow me on that? Nothing wrong with solo service events. Josh does a ton. I've done a lot. Roger had a light weekend. I uh, love Roger. He had a light weekend back in January, so he just put in a service event in our pilot office. It cost him nothing other than marketing. He sold $7,000. 
Neat. Cool. Okay. I know a lot of offices are virtual, but not all of them. Talk to your manager. See if you can just go post up there for a day. It's kind of cool. All right. And so I will say this, though. One other last quick thought uh, is that when we have multiple people there, our averages are higher. Like, that's just the truth. Like, solo events are cool, and if you're a warrior, that's great. But I will tell you, we have thousands of data points to back this up. Two to four people is a sweet spot for us. I'm not saying that's what y'all have to do, but there's an energy and a life that's created in this shared space with customers and other salespeople. And when it's solo, you're just kind of in this big empty room, and it's a little weird. It's okay, but it's a little weird. Y'all understand this whole program is weird to customers, right? They're like, I'm going to bring my knives into a hotel. And they're just like, I am not here to check in. Uh, is this the right place? <laughs> okay. Your customers feel weirdly insecure about this. So like we got to lower the barrier of entry here just a little bit. All right. So what are benefits? Okay. Um, guys, we have created sales waves. If you've got the handout, take a look here on the one that says checklist. All right. It's, it's kind of like this. Uh, we'll go through this really quick. Guys, we've created sales waves throughout the year during our lighter seasons. All right, so this is a huge benefit. We have been able to look at the calendar and say, when do we organically not have as many shows? Great, we'll plan a wave of service events. Now, what is a wave? A wave is literally where we will get our whole team together and say, we're going to block off a two-week window of time. And we'll have certain requirements for everyone on the team for the amount of days that you have to do. Now, you can do more if you want, but based on your territory and where you want to work, great. We're going to offer a bunch of days here in these different areas, okay? We have a Google form. Our team goes in there. Rob Sander does a ton of work. God bless you, Rob. Our all coordinators do. Calvin, uh, the whole man management team, but our team will say, here's the amount of days I want to work, here's when I'm available, here's the locations, and we do our best to match that up. We do real work for our team on this, okay? We provide training, we provide support, we provide organization, okay? But, but by doing it in waves, what happens is you create momentum. Y'all with me on that? When you just pepper them in through the year, it's very hard to actually build momentum. It's kind of like when you're working like a, a big fair, like, or a home show. That very first day, like, you're all kind of, like, jacked up, and you're getting back in that rhythm. And then by the end of day one, you're kind of, like, you're in a good space. And, you know, the next day, you're coming from a base of more confidence and poise and preparation. The same is true for service events. When you've got a couple of these booked together, you create momentum. And a lot of y'all haven't reaped the benefit of this program because you've never had the chance to actually build momentum. Y'all follow me on that? I was talking to someone last night about service events, and they go, man, I did like five events last year. It was tough. I'm like, when did you do them? They're like, man, I did one in January, and then March, then August. <laughs> I was like, damn, dude, how do you learn anything doing that? Like, y'all with me on that? Unless you came into this fully formed and realized, like, that's really, really hard. So by having them bunched together, I think there's intrinsically a lot of value to that. And now, on top of that, some of your customers will travel pretty far. A lot of them won't, but they, let, they can decide for themselves. I have customers in Rockwall who will book for Fort Worth because they're all on my site together, and people can figure out what makes sense for them, okay? But my people in Rockwall, if it only said Fort Worth, they don't tend to book it. Y'all sort of follow me on that? I have to have enough options to be reasonable for a metro area. I think that's true for almost anything. Um, guys, here's one of the best things, though, is that everyone has an answer to sharpening questions. And those of you who work with assistants, you do not know what a point of stress this is for a lot of your assistants. When people are like, oh, I need sharpening, and they don't have an answer, or you don't have an answer. But guys, with my customers, I'm able to tell them I do a wave of sharpening in April, May. I do another wave in November. I, I met with a customer in January. They're like, I need my knife sharpened. I was like, cool, I just finished that so I can see you in May. And they're like, I don't want to wait that long. I was like, great, factory sharpening is incredible. Let me walk you through what that's going to look like. It's, they do a great job. You'll be without your knives for three weeks, but it's going to be awesome. And they're like, oh, I don't want to do that. I was like, nobody does. <laughs> nobody does. You could have done that for the last 10 years, and you haven't. And they're like, I guess May's cool. Because I'm just honest with them. I just have an answer right away. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to stress about it. I did the work to figure out when I'm doing my service events. Now, your wave doesn't need to line up with mine. That's just mine. For example, like that's what the TGP team has figured out makes really good sense for us. But guys, here's the biggest thing is just happy customers. Okay, guys, we want happy customers. Happy customers, um, we get fewer complaints. Happy customers, you get better responses to your marketing. Have y'all ever noticed how some people get a different response to their marketing from other people? Ever notice that? Ever notice two people on the team are using the same company for marketing services, have similar clientels, and yet one person seems to get a massive response, the other one doesn't? That's odd. Isn't that interesting? You're the control group, by the way. The marketing is the same. What's different? It's the way your customers receive it. That's the thing that a lot of times we don't think about. Your customer's response to marketing is largely based off their relationship and the vibe they feel from you. 
kind of with me on that? That's one of those like, like tough truth things, okay? My average order at service events since 2020 is $684. Even if I can only book six appointments in a day, five of them show and I sell to four of them, my net profit for that day is $1,268. On top of that, that's a pretty light day for me. I can use that time to catch up on business gift follow-ups. I can get up on a ton of emails. I can work on some calls. I can do reports. I can do PDI. It's an office working day where I get customers happy and I make $1,100 profit. Oh, I had to set up my cookware. Damn. Guys, with 11 appointments, 9 shows, 7 sales, that's $2,300 profit. Average cost for us in TGP for a day at a service event is around $100 for supplies, literature, booking the event. Like, we track all this because we're a professional organization. Let's look at the handout. All right, let's fly through here. This is a checklist. Again, more than one right answer. This is just what we do. Okay, hopefully it's helpful to some of y'all. It says, identify windows and cities for your service event waves during the year. We decided on the rough dates for our service events for 2023 in December of last year. Okay? So that way we can just start working it into the plan. We can start working our, our meetings around it. We're not stepping over it, but we have some planning. By the way, you don't have to be that aggressive for the record. Like, it's okay. You don't have to do that. That's just what makes sense for us. Guys, creating a priority list for customers, uh, I'm sorry, of customers for service and updating it consistently. I'm going to circle right back to that one. Lock up dates and locations for the events. About two months ahead of our scheduled wave is when we really try to reach out to our, our hotels and lock them up. And this has all the timeline and the details on there. Guys, you want to schedule far enough in advance so you have some flexibility on your dates and rates. Okay, like one of our hotels we work with all the time, we just assumed we could book it because we're always able to, and then it turns out they're renovating their meeting room. We're like, oh, dang, dang. So we need a little extra time to find other venues. You follow me on that? So that's why you want to give yourself enough runway that you have time to work on it. Order your service events uh, supplies three to four weeks in advance. One of my favorite parts about the CSP retreat, when we were in the factory and I just mentioned my name, they went, oh my gosh, you're the service event guy. I was like, I am also an ADVM. <laughs> I'm a coordinator. I'm a human. <laughs> okay. Every year, we order so many service event boxes, they always call me and go, we just figured you typed this in wrong. Because we order just thousands of dollars of this stuff because we do it all together in mass. Okay. Because again, this is done through our team. We have organization, we have coordination, and we have execution. Um, but guys, Take it seriously. By the way, like y'all understand, there's just things in the program we need to respect to keep the program. Like when you get the ARS tags, by the way, always have more tags than you need. Guys, don't cheat, don't cheat. If you know the tag can hold 25 pounds and you put 30 pounds in there, don't do that, don't do that. Like seriously, don't do that. Y'all understand the reason why that's an issue is we have union contracts, we have union American workers that are awesome up in Olean and like there's certain requirements for what we're sending into them and we don't wanna mess with the program, we wanna be respectful to them. So if you don't order enough tags, tough sledding, then you pay to send it in. Follow me on that? Yes or yes? Sorry, no one asked me to say that. I just had to say that because it matters to me. Guys, set up the events in your acuity or your calendar. Start your marketing three weeks in advance. Send a reminder 24 hours in advance with pictures of the venue. And the day of the event, make sure you bring your supplies and uh, specific items to your service events. Okay? A um, couple things on this, guys. We've already talked a little bit about the planning. Let's talk about the marketing. How do you fill these up? Texting is great, but it's not usually enough. Josh Muller is really, uh, he always shares with our team that it's not uncommon for half his appointments to be booked up in the 48 to 36 hours of before the event. So he starts marketing weeks before that, and the most active people will fill those up. Now, if you're Curtis, you just put out one email and you book 85 days because he has a billion clients and he's Curtis and he's awesome. I love working with Curtis, okay? But guys, you can't just count on your texting base. What my wife and I do that's worked really well for us and one of our secret weapons at service events is we always are getting a lot of warm leads. We have a priority list. So when someone comes up to the booth and says, hey, I need my Cutco sharpener, we get there at any point. In fact, hey, just for fun, why don't you look at the other handout? You maybe already did. Okay, it says, uh, if a customer asks for sharpening, first off, just confirm what area they're in, make sure it's an area you service, and then uh, here's what I always tell them, Mrs. Jones, you actually have two options for sharpening these days. The first is factory servicing. You can mail in your cut code any time, they'll sharpen it, they'll polish it, they'll buff your knives. If anything is damaged, they'll repair or replace them. They do an amazing job and it only costs you postage. It's a great service. By the way, don't ever talk down factory sharpening because factory sharpening is incredible, all right? The reason people don't do it is not because it's not awesome, it's because either they forgot about it or it's just inconvenient. And 99% of the time, it's just because it's inconvenient. Hey, the downside, though, is you're going to be without your knives for three weeks. A lot of customers also mean to send them off, but they just never get around to it. So what a lot of my clients love now are our new service events. We do free local sharpening events throughout the year, uh, and they're not too far from you. We run out meeting spaces at hotel conference centers, office complexes, even some malls. Plus, if anything is damaged or too far gone, we'll send it in for you, and you'll get a receipt. You simply schedule a free appointment with us on my website. I personally do the sharpening while you're there. Hey, our next round of service events is actually going to be coming up in uh, probably uh, end of 
May into the beginning, I'm sorry, end of April, the beginning of May? Would you like to be notified when we get our date scheduled near you? By the way, they pretty much say yes 100% of the time. And I immediately capture their info. Now, Curtis uses a QR code, which is great. I just text my assistant or I'll text my wife or she'll text me when we're talking to customers. And we literally just have a Google Doc and it's just a priority list. That's it. Okay? Now, here's the important part. It says, I'm going to put you on our priority sharpening list. Once we have our dates and locations locked up, we will reach out to you first before we send it out to a couple of thousand other customers in the area. So once you get that text or email, hey, make sure you schedule an appointment ASAP because I want to make sure we get yours taken care of. By the way, if those days don't work for you, make sure you let me know so we can still figure something out. Worst case scenario, we help you get them sent in. Uh, these are also private shopping events, so you can add anything to your collection you need to uh, when we're there together. I'm creating urgency, I'm creating expectations. Y'all follow me on this? But the way you're interacting with them matters. A lot of people it shows, and I even see people on our team sometimes, customers are like, I need sharpening, and they're like, oh, we do these sharpening events, they're pretty cool, and they're like, uh, you want me to text you? And they're like, okay, and then that's it. They kind of follow me on that? Like, you're not getting that benefit. So once we're ready to start our marketing, about two days before our texting base blast goes out, we will literally send messages to every single person on our priority list. We will immediately book 20 to 40 service appointments right away. Like just, boom, just right away in that first 24 hours. So can y'all see how all of a sudden when my marketing goes out, I'm not stressing about what if this day doesn't fill up. I'm not stressing about, oh my God, that nice hotel cost me a little more money. So, you know, what if I don't have 12 appointments today? I don't really care. It's fine. You follow me on that? But that's just through just a little bit of organization and just some really simple, simple steps that you can take. Okay? Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Um, guys, when it comes to the marketing, here's the thing. Partner up with people that have expertise in these areas. You know, I mentioned that just like it's a, it's a weird thing for customers when they walk into just a hotel. And that's like a barrier of entry, I think, mentally for some of us. So like Joseph Rodriguez sells like great signage. And I'm sure there's other people too. I'm just mentioning Joseph, okay? So like I called him the other day and I was like, hey, man, I need eight of those stand-ups so we can have those in the lobby. And it's like Cutco sharpening event, you know, and they're really nice and they're cool. So Joseph is a great partner. You know, Rob Steiner is who I use to do like my texting base and setting up my acuity and marketing. He does an incredible job. Vast Action is amazing. They have just some great like email templates and things like that. But find people who have expertise in the areas that aren't your strengths. Um, in TGP, they, they know my favorite thing to say is when we have a problem, what do we do? Throw money at it. Okay? Like, guys, pay people who have expertise in areas that you lack so you can focus on the areas that you're great and you can generate income and profit. Um, let's see. Direct scheduling. Some people love it. Some people don't. I don't direct schedule personally, but I know a lot of people who do and really make it work. But here's the thing. If you're going to direct schedule, you have to understand you're catching them at a really weird time. Okay, like you're catching them at a weird time. They're at a fair, they're at a home show, they're with their kids, they're with their wife, they're looking for a spa. And so like they're not in that mental state, even though you have shown a need and offered a service and brought value in it, they're not in a mental state where they're really thinking about this. So even though they agree to it, it's very, it's your level of reschedules or no-shows is going to generally be higher. You sort of follow me on that? So I'm not telling you don't do it. I'm just saying find people who are having a lot of success with it and try to model their, uh, try to model their averages and things that they're doing. Now, let's talk really quickly about executing at service events before we run out of time. Um, guys, quality reminders. I put on here, uh, and this is, this is something that's all Miriam. It's all my wife. She's amazing. Uh, anytime she sends out the reminder email, she always has a photo of the venue on there. That's such a small, simple thing that makes customers feel like much more confident. She goes on Google Maps and just searches for it, saves the first photo on there of the front of the hotel, and in, includes that with the text. This has just examples of the text we have. We've got a spreadsheet, like a Google Doc, that has more of these. I'll put it in Fire Group Me or whatever. If it's useful to y'all, that's great. But just having things like this, so that way it makes it a little bit simpler uh, for your customers. Guys, full displays have higher averages. Full displays have higher averages. I love it when people are like, I'm going no knives. And I'm like, oh wow, do you really think it's increasing your averages and all that? They're like, nope, but I don't have to bring boards. And I'm like, that is not a great motivation. Or it's people who are like, no, I have a package focus. And I'm like, you never sell packages. And they're like, that's why I'm focusing on it. <laughs> I'm like, no, homie, you got to learn how to get good at it. Then you rework your business around it. Um, guys, your display informs your customers on how they should be thinking. That's a low-key nugget. Your display informs your customers of how they should be thinking. I was working a, a show here recently, and I had a smaller table than I expected, and I had to make a decision on having like this giant business gift set up or a flatware chest. Flatware is easier to sell, but business gifts, mmm, chef's kiss. I just didn't have my flatware out. Now, is that ideal? No, but I made the choice I did, and I don't regret it. 
okay? I had a lot of good business gift orders at that show at the Dallas Safari Club. So you just do what you do, you know, do what you do. But I will tell you that your display informs customers on how they should be thinking about things. Guys, don't be afraid to be direct. Here's my, my closing thought. There is no other time when your customers are more connected to you and have more value in the guarantee and the service you're willing to provide them than when you're at a service event. And I don't think we realize that as a community. There is literally no time that you are at a higher point of leverage, of influence, of relationship building than when you have just served your clients at a high level and honestly expected really nothing in return. If they want to buy, great. You're a salesperson. They know that. That's not weird. There, it, is, it is crazy. It is crazy how connected you are to your customer in that moment. And so, guys, knowing that, knowing there is no other time where you actually have that state with your customers. By the way, it's not a service call where they're distracted by their kids or their dog being weird. It's not a show where they're distracted by all the other venues. They are just you and them. And they're in this sort of peak state of, I'm vibing. I like Cutco. I like Chris. I like the service that I'm getting right now. They're vibing with you. And what are you doing with that time? What are you doing with it? Are you confident in your power intros like we learned about last night? Do you know how to go into different packages? Guys, are you ready to get your customers serious about gifting? Okay? I talk about this in like every talk I do when I get the chance to. But, but guys, here's the thing. Every customer you have, every Gold Star client you have, there is a finite amount of Cutco they're ever going to buy for their home. There is a ceiling. There is a limit to how much Cutco they'll ever buy for their home. If you do not get them on gifting at some point, family program or business gifts, if you do not get them on gifting, you will eventually end the life cycle of your relationship with that customer. Sure, they'll still come and see you at a home show. They'll buy the 19th paring knife we release. It's going to be great. They're like, why does this one have a reverse hook? And you're like, cuz. Thank you, Brett Kramer, for the precision set. I, I ran out of room. How to explain. Does everyone else just do the screwdriver? It's like, it's like screwdrivers. You need a lot. And they're like, can I use this as a screwdriver? I'm like, it's a Santoku one, probably. <laughs> Guys, if you want to extend the professional relationship with your best clients, you need to learn how to promote Cutco for gifting purposes. And that is literally the end of my message. I think service events are the ultimate Trojan horse to family program and to business gifts. Now, everyone's a little different on this, but my best business gift client came from the service event after they've been buying for years. April and Ronnie West bought three signature sets for me at a service event pretty recently for their kids. These are clients for life now, not for their kitchen, but for everyone else because of gifting. And all that is thanks to service events. Guys, let's live up to the high promises we make to our customers. Let's not be transactional. Let's build a book of business, and let's go kill some service events. This is how